Hello again, everyone. I have decided to start a favorite series, and this will be the first in that favorite series. I plan to do it for a variety of things, including fountain pens, inks, watercolors, and other media that I've been using and really loving. So this first one just happens to be fountain pens because um, I'm using fountain pens all the time lately, especially since I'm doing my uh, Watership Down transcription project. I will put a link below to that video. I actually plan to do a separate video on the status of that because <clears throat> because I do have an entire volume now written. So I wanted to go through it and show you some of the um, some of the different pens and inks that I use and talk about which ones I liked and which ones I didn't. But based on that practice, I have been discovering which pens I really like at the moment anyway. So I have chosen three fountain pens and three inks, and these three inks just happen to be in these three fountain pens, which is kind of interesting because um, I was thinking about what inks I like to use, and these inks were the things that came to mind. And then when I was going through my pens, I found that my three favorite fountain pens that I've been using contain these three inks. So it really was sort of serendipity for this video. So um, in future videos, I might have different inks and different pens that aren't necessarily using them, but uh, it just worked out that way this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the fountain pen ink bottles to the side and I'll bring them out for each pen that they're in. But I'm also gonna do some writing samples of each of these pens. So I'm bringing out my Tomoe River A5 notebook to do some writing samples for you all so you can kind of see what it is I like about these pens. So this first one is a 1911 Large by Sailor. And this is the only 1911 Large that I have in my Sailor collection. And I have to say that I really like the size of the Large version. Um, not to be confused with the King of Pens, which is gigantic, and I have never even held one of those. So, um, But this seems like a good size for my hands. I have fairly small hands, but the smaller one, I mean, although the smaller one works and I like it, I think I like the feel of a little bit of a heftier pen in my hand. And I, although I don't have a um, 1911 standard handy, I do have this 1911 Junior, which is roughly the same size as a standard. And you can see the size difference is not that huge. So there's just a little bit extra and it is a little bit girthier around the pen itself. Um, and obviously this is a, a Junior, well, and now they're being sold as Compass here in the US. I purchased this one from Yoseka Stationery a while back and, it, and they were marketing it as the 1911 Junior. So that gives you a sense of the size difference. Um, this is also the only pen with a medium nib that I have from Sailor, and I am loving it. And I have to say that when I was trying to pick which pens to choose for this video, and it just happened to be three. In future, I, I'm not going to tie myself to any particular number of favorites. <laughs> it may be more or less in the future, but <clears throat> when I was trying to decide which pens to profile, I wanted to include almost all of my sailors. And to me, that means that I'm really, really liking the sailor brand. Um, I'm really liking the, uh, the Pro Gear Mini. I'm really liking the, uh, the various nibs that I have in the 1911 uh, styles and the, also the, um, the Japanese versions of these pens that I've gotten off of Amazon. So, uh, but like I said, this is the only medium nib that I have and it is, it just writes wonderfully. I, I'm really, really enjoying it. And the ink that I have in this one is another current favorite, which is the Sailor Shikiori Yamadori ink. And I actually have a cartridge in here because I got the full, the full set of cartridges uh, for the Shikiori line. And when I was trying this out, I thought, you know, I am definitely gonna want more of this ink beyond uh, the three cartridges that I have. And I bought the bottle to make sure that I would have it at least for, you know, the time being. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna write the name of the pen, the name of the ink, and then I'm going to do the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, just so you can see how it writes. And uh, then I will put it up to the camera so that you can see it a little bit better. And then I'll go on to the next pen. So this one is the Sailor, also 
This was sitting for a while before this video and I have not tested it or anything and it always writes right away beautifully, even if I have it nib and up in a case. So that's one of the other reasons why I like this one. So this is the 1911 large, which in black, which has an 18, or no, I'm sorry, a 21 carat medium nib. And I think because of the higher gold content too, it's a little bit flexy and I really love that. I, I, it's, not, it's not a true flex, but it has a little bit of softness and give, which I really like. And it just makes it for, makes for a really smooth writing experience. Okay, and this ink is the Sailor Shikiori. Shikiori Yamadori. And then let's do a quick brown fox jumps over a lazy dog. And I'm going to do, well, I, I will just do cursive for this. And you can see that this ink is really lovely. It has some shading, shading meaning it um, shows up in different concentrations throughout the words and letters. And it's just a really lovely shade of bluish green. I would say it has a tiny bit of green in it, but it's mostly sort of a deeper teal. Um, but it's just really, really lovely. The pen glides across the paper. I love it. It does have a little bit of feedback, and I know a lot of people have um, shared this about Sailor Pens, is that they're not glass smooth, but I still really love it. I don't feel like there is a negative type of feedback, in my opinion. Okay, so that's number one, and I'm gonna leave that over there. So number two is this Tatcha pen, with it, which happens to have a sailor made nib that is branded Tatia, but it is a music nib and it is a stainless steel nib. And based on the performance of this one, I would probably like to at some point get a gold, um, a, a gold uh, music nib so that I can try that and see what the difference is. So, um, the one issue I have with this pen is that. Um, the cap is kind of heavy. So, so this is the Tatcha Skylight, I believe, in Forest Eye. And this, the only difference between this and the, oh, I'm now I'm, I'm forgetting the other model that was released with it, is that this is turned on a lathe, whereas the other one is molded or injection molded for the body of the pen. So this one, so it's, I find that it's a little bit light for my tastes without the pen posted or pen cap posted. And then I find it a little heavy with the cap posted. When I was writing with it, I tried both and I actually think I slightly prefer posted even though it's rather large that way. Um, I, do, I do realize that I like the feel of a heftier pen in my hand. I don't know why. So this is, oh, and, and the ink that's in here is SBRE Brown by Ackerman. And this was something that I had to look around quite a bit to find any in stock. But my search for the perfect shading brown is over. This is the perfect shading brown ink, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and show you. And this nib shows it off incredibly well. So this is the Tatcha. I believe it's the Skylight. Forest eye with a stainless steel music nib. And I could really write with this pen all day. It's it's beautiful. The the only <laughs> so the only other issue with such a broad line here like this is that it runs out of ink fairly quickly. When I was doing a chapter in Watership Down with this particular pen, I had to fill it twice. Um, although this is still the second fill. So I had a full, a full uh, uh, converter and then I used all that and then I had to fill it again and then I used all that and then I had to fill it again and this is still what's left from that last fill. And the ink here 
is the Ackerman SBRE Brown. And then here I will write the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The other thing that I like about this particular nib is that the line is not so broad that you can't use it in regular writing day to day. The um, music nib that I have from Platinum that I've shown on the channel before, and uh, if I remember, I will put a link below, is a little bit too wide and broad for everyday writing. Uh, I still love the line that I get from it, and it's super smooth and beautiful, but this can be really used for everyday writing because it's not too incredibly large. Okay, so that's number three. Or, I'm sorry, number two. <laughs> I, I promise you, I can count. <laughs> okay, so this is a pen that, unfortunately, if you're interested, you're, you're probably not going to be able to find it. In fact, I don't even know what model this is. So this is an Aurora brand, and it's vintage, and I purchased it off of a secondhand site, and it was sold to me as simply a vintage Aurora fountain pen. And um, when I first saw it, I was like, what is that with, with all these crazy, um, it's almost like a marbled end paper on the pen, which makes me think that maybe it's the 70s given the style, but I'm not sure. Um, but when I first saw it, I was like, oh, what's that? And then I saw that it was Aurora and I saw that the nib was in good shape from the pictures. So I went ahead and got it. Um, and I'll tell you, there's some, there's some quirks to this pen. So, um, I'll go through that here. In fact, this one, let me see. Oh yeah, we're writing fine. So I won't worry about that. And then this pen contains Colorverse Dirty Red, which is, I believe, a fairly new release from Colorverse. This is the first Colorverse ink that I have ever used, and it's just lovely. It has, um, I love a red ink, and this is a really nice dark shade of red that does have some shading. So both really nice features of that ink. So what I'm going to call this here, this is the Aurora <laughs> Vintage vintage pen. I'm just going to call it that. And I believe, yeah, so it's a medium nib. And I'm not even sure what the nib is made out of. It doesn't say anything about it being gold, so I suspect that it's not. But it writes beautifully, and it's just, it's a pleasure to write with. Um, I was actually really, really surprised, and it makes me wonder whether I should consider some newer Aurora pens. They do tend to be kind of expensive. This, I think I purchased... Um, used obviously for around $40 I think um, and that that is a bargain for this beautiful beautiful pen so the ink is Colorverse Dirty Rose or Dirty Red oh it's Dirty Red for some reason I always thought it was Dirty Rose <laughs> because it has a picture of a rose on it and I just automatically read rose into that red word there so it is dirty red which is beautiful okay so then we're gonna do the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and I would say that these mediums are very similar in the width, the line width. And I'm actually going to open that pen back up and show you, because I don't think I showed you the second one. You can see really beautiful shading in all of these inks, actually. So clearly shading inks are what I'm into right now. <laughs> um, but they're all beautiful colors and write really, really beautifully. And I really like that this music nib brings out the shading a lot in that brown ink. So what I did want to show you about this pen is that so <laughs> so when I purchased this, I knew that it only came it only came with one ink cartridge, which I can refill. I've saved the ink cartridges just in case the ink cartridge, there's only one. Um, in case I do want to fill it at some point, but I thought, you know, I want to get a converter because I don't really want to deal with that. So I purchased a new Aurora converter, which are actually pretty expensive. They're like $20 for a converter. And um, it doesn't fit. 
So I was like, okay, what's going on here? So I looked it up and apparently these older model Aurora pens will take a platinum converter. And I had a platinum converter that I wasn't using, so I went ahead and put it in here and tried it, and it works perfectly. So I was really kind of surprised at that. So um, that makes that a cheaper alternative. I ended up returning the Aurora converter because um, I bought it from Jet Pens and they did allow me to return it. Just because, you know, $20 is a lot to kind of waste on a converter that I probably will never use because I, I kind of looked into it and the newer Auroras, <laughs> including including the Auroras being fairly expensive, when you do get them, they usually come with a converter. So it didn't seem it didn't seem to make any sense for me to keep the converter. But I just wanted to share that. And, um, you know, sort of a, part of it is a lesson learned for vintage fountain pens. Um, I figured I'd be all ready to go, you know, I'd prepare for the pens so that I could write with it right away. And as it turned out, my planning was kind of um, dashed because I should have done a little bit more research. Although part of it was I couldn't do research because I didn't know what model this pen was. Um, but, but yeah, do your research before you, you know, expend any more money on something like this. I guess that's, that's the lesson to me. But anyway, so these are my three favorites currently. And I don't expect them ever to not be pens that I like writing with, just given how much I've already written with them and how much I've liked writing with them. Uh, my, my thought is that eventually I would like to pare down my collection a little bit to the pens that I really, really love. And that's part of the reason why I'm doing this series, so that I can really kind of analyze which ones I do really love. Um, Part of my problem with doing that is is a lot of times I'll find a use for, for various fountain pens. I'll say, well, oh, well, this is a good general use pen. Oh, this was inexpensive, so I could go ahead and, you know, keep it around or something like that. But I, I do want to pare it down because basically I want to get to the point where no matter what pen I pick up, I love writing with it. And I don't think that's an unreasonable uh, expectation to have of my collection. So there you go. All right, well, that's it for today. I will put a link to all of these pens, except for this one, because that is vintage. Um, and like I said, I have not been able to find out what model this is. If any of you can recognize it and identify it, please, please weigh in. Um, but I just don't know which model it is. And especially since I'm very new to the brand, I, I just am not that familiar with it. So, but other than that, I will put a link to the pens and the inks that I've shown on this video. And um, I think I referenced a couple of vid other videos, so I'll, I'll try to make sure that I include links down below. But if for some reason I forget, you know, just let me know down in the comments and I'll, and I'll remedy that as soon as I can. All right, well, thank you for joining me. Feel free to subscribe so you can keep track of fu future videos on my channel. And I plan to have more of these favorites videos for you in the near future. All right, thanks so much, bye.